Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? I don't remember much about the world before the sickness. I was just a kid when it started, too young to fully grasp all the changes happening across the globe. Looking back, it was as though some cosmic clearance bin of trashy dystopian paperbacks was spilling plot points out onto reality. You had your unknown virus, your slow to act world leaders, your extremists, deniers on one end, doomsday preppers on the other. And overall, just a heck of a lot of scandal and angst. What it boiled down to was this. Stay away from each other. Yep, that simple. Stay away. Because the sickness mutated so rapidly, spread so easily, and killed so many, that preventing transmission was the only way to stop it from wiping out the human race. A cure could be developed, they told us. Would be developed, they promised. Somehow. Someday. Life changed. Everything from school and work to medical appointments and family dinners became virtual. And as it turns out, hosting an online society requires a lot of computer programming. Like, a lot, a lot. Lucky for me, I'd always had a knack for stuff like that. It was easy to get trained and even easier to find work. When's the last time you heard a young person say that, huh? I did programming for medical services, government websites, automated manufacturing, there was no shortage of freelance contracts. Of course, places like movie theaters, shopping malls, and restaurants died out. Even farms and factories became rare. So much of the workforce lost. But to be honest, I personally thought all of it was a net gain for the planet. Fewer people meant less pollution. War and terrorism dropped to an all-time low. Most people learned to be at least somewhat self-sufficient. As for me? Well, since my parents both died not long after my high school graduation, I was probably more self-sufficient than most. I was alone for a long time. Long enough to be used to it. At least I was healthy. I had my routine, with lots of work to keep me busy and the internet at my fingertips to keep me from getting bored. What more could I have wanted? What a load of bullshit. Literally. <laughs> Good one. even there. I never sweep.
I don't have to go out there and check, do I? I mean, someone could be in trouble. But then again, someone could be trouble. Maybe just stand on the porch and yell for whoever it is to get off the lawn? I was raised by humanitarian hippies, and all I got was this pesky conscience. Kidding. Love you, Mom and Dad. Please don't haunt me. Yo, anybody out here? No? Cool. Have a good night then. Hello? I'm here. Would you mind, um, helping me out of this, please? It sure is cold out. I'm definitely not shaking out of fear, because that would be super lame. You there! What are you doing on my property? Please? I got lost and I promise I wasn't trying to steal anything. Well, then explain yourself! Why are you just laying on the ground there? Seems pretty sus. Get up. Oh my god! Are you okay? Thank you. I'm 
so glad you found me. I was afraid I'd be trapped in that thing all night. Sorry, is it okay that I'm touching you like this? Um, it's fine. Let's just get out of this rain. Where did I put that kit? Before anything else, let me scan your temperature. No fever, that's a relief. Do you have any other symptoms? Are you a doctor? Do you honestly think I look like a doctor? sure what a doctor looks like, but you seem to know what you're doing, and you're a very kind person, so I believe you if you told me you were a doctor. It's just basic first aid. Not a big deal. Here, hold this. Put pressure on it while I wrap it up. That should be okay overnight, but we should probably clean it again and rewrap it tomorrow. You're going to let me stay here? Huh?
You said clean it again tomorrow, right? Well, it's not like I'm going to just send you back out into the rain. Not by yourself, anyway. Is there anyone else in your bubble? Anyone I can call to come get you, or...? No. Okay, well, you can sleep on my couch tonight. We'll figure the rest out tomorrow. We should really stay at least six feet apart, though. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I liked these pants. Oh no, did you get hurt too? No, it's just a rip. Oh, that's not so bad. Wow, it already feels so much better. You must have a magical healing touch. You need to take that dress off. Um, that came out wrong. Uh, what I mean is, it's wet and cold, and I'm sure you'd feel better if you changed into something dry and warm. I'm sure I have some extra clothes you can wear. Really? Here, take whatever you want. They're all clean. That's so, so nice of you. I'll get changed now. felt this comfy since I don't know when. It's a school shirt, right? I always liked the look of school uniforms, but I never got to wear one. All my classes were online. How old are you? 21. My birthday was actually last week. Oh, well, happy belated birthday. Do you... Have a name? Oh, of course I do. It's Mallory. Nice to meet you, Mallory. Well, not nice, exactly. Weird to meet you, I guess. Uh, I'm not used to people. Uh, yeah, I get it. I didn't mean to trespass onto your property. I really did get lost. And then the rain started, and I could hear these dogs or something howling. I was scared. And I ran towards the first line I saw. But what were you doing out there in the first place? I would rather not talk about that. Don't worry about it. You're here now, so just take the opportunity to get some rest. Man. 
this is perfect. Thank you so, so much for everything. Truly, I'm lucky to have met you. Yeah, just try not to touch anything, okay? Okay, I'm going to bed. Bye. I hope you have sweet dreams. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Thank you. I'm really so sorry. I tried wafting a dish towel at it, but the alarm just wouldn't stop. I didn't wake you, did I? Oh... What is that? Oh, I thought I'd make you breakfast as a thank you. My mom used to have the best recipe for potato pancakes that would always fuel me for the day. But these... Well, I'm not totally sure what happened. I never used a stove like yours before, so this batch got a little... overdone. Maybe I can scrape off the burnt part. Hmm... You know what? Forget I said that. It's all burnt part. I'll just clean up my mess and then I'll make you a new batch. And I will definitely be more careful this time. Hang on. Did you say... Potato pancakes? Mm-hmm, they're the best. It's too bad this first batch didn't turn out because I spent all morning digging up the potatoes, washing them, peeling them. They were so tiny it took extra long, and I was worried you'd wake up before I could finish. Luckily, I've got some other treats on the go as well, so you're not going to starve. Just let me turn on the toaster real quick. Wait, stop! Why did you do that? I'm sorry. I just wanted to make you some breakfast. I didn't mean to cause so much trouble. I'll clean this up. Are you angry with me? I'm just not a breakfast person. I'm really sorry. 
I just wanted to do something nice as a thank you for letting me stay here. I promise, I'll fix everything and then I'll just get ready to leave. Sure. Whatever. I'll be out in the yard for a while. did I get myself into? For real, I can't believe. Ah oh, well, she'll be gone soon anyway. been painful. This is really nice. Like, really, really nice. She couldn't. She wouldn't. Supply. It, it's still warm if you want to use it. That's my water supply! My fresh water! My drinking water! My, my everything water! What were you thinking? Why did you use so much? Oh my gosh, I had no idea. I had no idea. I'm so sorry. I really didn't know. How do you survive this way? It's like you're constantly wasting things! Is this why you were out in the rain last night? Did your bubble decide to kick you out because you don't know how to think before you act? Just finish up in here, and don't drain that water, okay? I'll repurpose it for laundry or something.
<clears throat> what are you doing with those clothes? Oh, I was just going to go through them and sort out what's good to wear. I hope that's okay. Right, you're welcome to take anything that doesn't fit me anymore. I'm sure you could use some warmer things to wear out there on your travels. Oh good, you're finished working. That's perfect because supper is ready. Um, what is all this? It's all made from freeze-dried proteins and grains I found in the pantry. And some spices, which by the way make all the difference when it comes to flavoring a dish. Oh, and I only used things that were already open, so I hope I didn't overstep again. I can tell you work really hard. And I know I made a mess of things, and I just really wanted to make it up to you. I'm determined to have a net positive impact here. Well, this does look incredible. And by the smell of it, I'm pretty sure I'll be licking these plates clean. Er... You did wash your hands before you started, right? Yes, yeah, silly. And I still don't have any symptoms of any sicknesses either. So come on, let's eat. I want you to enjoy it while it's hot. How's your leg feeling? It's not too bad. I should probably take a look at it after supper. Clean it up and put a fresh bandage on it. And then, I suppose we should talk about getting you home? Uh, right. Home. I mean, I don't know if you have a family or a group or whatever, or if you're on your own like me, but you don't exactly look like you... Er, live in the forest. So where are you headed? Surely there must be someone, somewhere. I'll figure something out. Hang on, no. I want to make sure you're going to be okay. I thought you just wanted me to leave. Ideally, I'd like to know at least something about your situation. Maybe I could help you. That's sweet of you, but... I'm sorry. I'm just not ready to talk about it. Okay. Can I just ask one more question? Why are you still wearing that towel? What? You mean I've been wearing this the whole time? Oh, I can't believe it. How do I forget these things? Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll be back to clean up as soon as I'm decent.
No, you already cleaned up. I guess that's it then. You should stay. Also, I'm sorry. I've been a total asshat to you. It was kind of a shock to have you show up here. I haven't had anyone visit, ever. Because this has always been my space, my family's space. I guess I felt sort of invaded. But now I realize that's stupid. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, I wouldn't feel right making you leave when you're clearly in a bad spot. I have the means to help you and there's no reason why I shouldn't. If you want to leave, that's fine, but there's no rush, cool? Can I redress your leg now? Your pot is boiling. Oh, you surprised me. Good morning. How did you sleep? I slept okay. How about you? Your couch is super comfy, and that blanket is so cozy and warm. Good. I'm glad. Did you need something from up there? Uh... <laughs> yes, please. I was looking for aspirin and I thought I saw a bottle up there, but I couldn't really reach. I didn't want to risk standing up on a chair or something with my leg. Is it getting more painful? I did notice a little redness yesterday, but I didn't think it was infected. Unless... Wait, you're not feeling sick, are you? No, no, it's just the leg. It's a bit achy.
Thank you so much. You're the best. <clears throat> Maybe it's time for another temperature check. Just to be sure. Could you, um, move your hair? Okay, you're good. But we should keep distancing until enough time has passed to know for sure. How's this for a second attempt at breakfast? Well, you seem to have learned how to use the stove properly. Really, this is amazing and I don't deserve it. Looks like we'll have great weather today. I was thinking of doing some work in the garden for a while. A place like this needs a lot of maintenance. 10 acres of green space, all the off-grid systems. It's a constant running to-do list to keep everything going. It seems pretty amazing. Is it hard to take care of it all by yourself? It can be hard work, but it's worth it. Well, what can I do to help? I suppose you could join me if you'd like. Some fresh air might help you feel rejuvenated, speed up your healing. I could show you a little bit about my setup too. Introduce you to the hens. You have hens? Like little chickens that actually run around going cluck cluck? For real? Yeah, I have fish too. You want to meet them? Yes, I do. I really do. Okay, let's head outside then. Oh my gosh! Are these strawberries? They look so plump and juicy, and they're so red! How did you grow them? They're actually the easiest thing to maintain around here. They grow like weeds. Pretty much every year I get three whole harvests out of this patch. Really? What do you do with all of them? I make my own jams, put them in salads, make smoothies, things like that. I dehydrate some for easy snacking, too. But I think they're best right off the bush. You're welcome to have some. I've never eaten a strawberry before. Are you sure? Never? Jeez. Yeah, help yourself. 
Just put your index finger and thumb right behind the stem and pinch it off. Watch out for slugs. Mmm, oh wow, these taste just like sunshine. I could eat these every day. Feast away. Oh look, this one's shaped like a heart. Ooh, this one here is huge. Look how shiny and red it is. It's like something out of a picture book. Oh, there's a little bug munching on that one. Enjoy your meal, little bug. <laughs> Can I do that? Oh, no, that's okay. You need to go easy on your leg. My leg feels fine. Please? Do-do-do, pulling up weeds. Looking good. Work. Good work, I mean. Let's move all this stuff into the compost bin. Okay. What's that? Basically, I put all the dead plant matter and vegetable waste I have into the tumbler. Since it's a sealed container, it traps lots of heat inside and helps the stuff break down. See the handle on the side? I use that to turn the tumbler so everything gets mixed together. Then, once it's all broken down, I mix it in with the garden soil. The compost gives the soil extra nutrients, which helps the plants grow. It's kind of like the circle of life. I save all the peels and ends from the produce I eat, turn them into compost, and use that to grow more stuff. So the garden really provides its own nutrients for the next crop of plants that grow there. Wow, that's amazing. Honestly, everyone should be doing this. It's a big part of reducing waste. It's like a big, friendly leaf monster. Nom nom nom. Are you feeling sick? No, <clears throat> sorry. It's just my throat is dry. I'm really thirsty. I'll go get us some water. What are those? They look like shields for your house. Oh, sort of. They're solar panels. And they... 
look like they could use a sweep, actually. Why? What are they for? They absorb energy from the sun and turn it into power for the cabin. What? Really? Um, here. Face toward the sun and spread your arms out. Feel the warmth? That's energy from the sun. Or as I like to call it, the nuclear furnace that sits in the sky, 150 million kilometers away from us. The solar panels take that energy and convert it into electricity. That current makes its way down to a charge controller, which turns the current into voltage for the batteries. My computer, appliances, and lights are all modified to run off that DC voltage. Oh, and the charge controller is hooked up to a battery that can store all that incoming energy. So we can still run the power for a while, even when the sun has gone away. So you capture the sunshine and turn it into energy? Isn't that like what flowers do? Yeah, that's one way of thinking about it. It's like magic. If we'd had something like this where I grew up, then the citywide power outages wouldn't have mattered so much. Give me a few minutes to sweep the leaves off the roof. Then we can go say hi to the hens. Oh, okay. They're over there, just FYI. In case I happen to fall to my death or something. What? Don't worry. If that happens, you can just bury me in the garden. My corpse will give lots of nutrients to the soil. <laughs> around like that it's not funny sorry sorry I'll be back in a few you rest Ready? <laughs> for as long as they've been alive, I've been alone. So they're either happy for me or scared of you. Not sure. Did I not mention that? Yeah, they hatched a few days ago. You can pick them up if you want. They're so cute! Are you sure I can touch them? It looks like they'll break, they're so tiny. They'll be okay. Just gently scoop them up into your hands.
Oh, uh, sorry about the smell, by the way. I'm used to it, so I guess I forget that coops can get pretty smelly. I don't find it bad at all. Do you want to feed them? There's a bag of grain just behind you. I try to give them a good life, even if it's only a short one. Huh? What do you mean? Well, some of these chicks will grow up into egg layers, so that we can eat things like that amazing omelette you made this morning. And others will be butchered for meat. It's not like I want to. It's just how it goes. I need to eat, and I can't exactly go pick up meat from the grocery store. Mallory? I understand. I guess I just never thought about it before. It makes me a little sad. I'll be okay though. Thank you for bringing me to meet them. Shall we head back inside? So, there was one more thing I really wanted to show you today. It's the most intricate and nerdy of all my systems, and by far my favorite. Remember when I said I have fish? Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. The fish are actually part of a system I use to grow plants and food indoors. That way I can have at least some fresh things to eat in winter. It's called aquaponics, and it's really freaking cool. Come on, I'll show you. Okay. Why is it so dark in here? I know, the purple light is kind of strange. It's because those are grow lights. Their wavelength mimics the sun and gives the plants the specific red and blue light they need. It's a way of tricking them into thinking they're outdoors. Not that plants can think. This is amazing! Told ya. I know, but I wasn't expecting so many plants. You have... you have so much food. Why are there plants growing out of the tank water? Technically, they're not. They have their own water. It's just been cycled through the fish tank as well. That's how they get nutrients. It's like the circle of life, kind of. I feed the fish and they produce waste, which contains ammonium. That gets converted to nitrites and then into nitrates, which the plants can use to grow. 
These tubes carry the tank water up through a filter. The filter traps all the bits of waste and gunk that won't help the plants and lets the now nutrient-rich water run through and into the plant pots. It's all a careful balance, everything working in harmony. If I feed the fish and keep the filters clean, then they're able to take care of my plants for me. Here, feed them. Just take a bit and sprinkle it in. Okay. They're really hungry. Looking at them feels peaceful. Yeah. Who taught you all of this? Um... Well, my parents used to take care of their plants sort of like this when I was young. And then I taught myself a bunch more by reading or by trial and error. My family had nothing like this. There was one grocery store in our neighborhood. We'd have to wait in line for ages, and then the shelves would be practically empty. We had to scrounge and make do with food that was either spoiled or just plain not enough. All these systems you use. If we could have had something like this, then maybe... you wanted to show me all this stuff but um what do you do for fun around here yeah yeah i know all work and no play yada yada how about this let's go make some tea get something to eat and i'll show you my video games I used to hold the record for fastest speedrun of this game, you know. <laughs> you did not. There's no such thing as a speedrun of a clicker game, and if there was, that record would be held by a bot.
morning, sleepyhead. Your breakfast is waiting. Good morning to you too. First things first though. It isn't much, but I thought it would be good to have a high calorie meal since we both worked so hard yesterday. in your fridge to make this. I hope that's okay. I went out to check the coop for more, but there were none. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it takes them a day or two, but we'll have more eggs soon. So I guess I worked you too hard yesterday, huh? What makes you say that? You fell asleep at like 7 o'clock last night. It's okay. You learned a lot yesterday and learning is hard work. I probably went a little overboard with the teaching. No, oh, but I enjoyed it so much. Hey Mallory, have you heard about this one weird trick for removing viral toxins? Removing them from where? It doesn't actually say, but there's a grainy picture of someone laying what looks like lasagna noodles across their stomach, so I'm assuming it's nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't believe how many of these I get. They're so stupid. Partly cloudy this morning, with a chance of scattered showers throughout the afternoon and overnight. And it looks like tomorrow's gonna be rainy all day. Maybe there'll be enough water for a luxurious bath after all! Uh. <laughs> I should probably do a few things outside though. Get the basic chores done before the weather turns. How about you just keep me company this time? Oh, all right. <laughs> They're flying south to escape the coming cold. They probably have their own tropical paradise somewhere, with their own beach houses where they spend all winter sunbathing and drinking margaritas.
Just kidding. Geese don't do that stuff. But wouldn't it be nice to go on a vacation like that? I don't know. I've never been on a vacation. Maybe someday, someone will figure out a way to stop the virus. And you'll be able to go somewhere amazing. Not by myself, I hope. No, definitely not by yourself. That's probably enough hard labor for the day. Let's go in. I need to do some work on my computer. Oh, not just yet. Please. I'd like to enjoy the fresh air a little while longer before the rain comes. Ah, okay. If you're good, then I'm good. Ugh. Stay on the alert for spiders. Oh yes, I've already met a few of them. They're so helpful chasing off all the harmful bugs. Phew, I am hot. I almost want to take my sweater off. <laughs> Taking your sweater off won't change anything. <laughs> uh, sorry. My tummy must be hungry after all that work. Mine is too. And I think I felt a raindrop just now, which is probably our cue to head inside. Do you want to meet me in there? I'll pick some things to make us a strawberry salad. Wow, that sounds so delicious. I'll see you in a bit. Well, if we get as much rain as the forecast predicts, the rain barrel sure will be happy. Those are the big containers on the side of the house? Yeah, you're getting good at this. It's probably the number one most important system I have here. The water those four barrels can hold can last a long time, as long as I'm careful with it. No luxurious baths. No water balloon fights either, I'm guessing. Just basic cleaning, cooking, and drinking, right? Jeez, you make me sound like someone who doesn't know how to have fun. You're pretty much right, though. But you can't just drink rainwater. It wouldn't be safe. Oh? The water picks up a lot of things before it makes its way into the barrel. Pollution from the air, chemicals, dirt and bird droppings from the roof. Ew. <laughs> yeah, it's gross. So I add chemicals to the water and filter it to make it clean and safe. I'll have to show you how all that stuff works. Cleaning the water, using the spigots. You're really smart. I like hearing about all the systems you use here. Can I make us some tea? That sounds like a very good idea. Yes, please.
She's probably just clearing her throat. Honey? Yes, dear? Um, I meant honey for your tea? Yep, you did. And I was saying, yes, I will have honey for my tea. And then I was very rudely interrupted mid-thought by a deer that definitely exists and totally ran past the window. <laughs> Ooh, I just burned my tongue. See, that's why I always let mine cool down for a minute or two. I couldn't do that. It smelled too delicious to wait. Here, this will help. Thank you. You're so sweet. So, why would someone as nice as you feel the need to set bear traps right in front of their home? Well, I don't know who this nice person is you're talking about, but I can tell you why I have traps set up around my house. It's all because of Lola. Ooh, is that a stalker ex-girlfriend? Do you have to defend your property from a lot of girls? <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. Lola was my best friend, my beautiful Bernese mountain dog. She was the family pet, really, but me and her, we had a special bond. After my parents passed away, Lola and I took care of each other. She was a hard worker. She was by my side always, finding little ways to help me out. You definitely would have loved her. She had one brown eye and one blue eye, and her heart was made of gold. One fall evening, I was inside working on the computer, and Lola was outside on the deck, just enjoying the cold. Bernie's mountain dogs are, as the name implies, mountain dogs, and they're made to be out in the snow. She loved snow. The deeper, the better. But it hadn't snowed yet that year. Lola started barking, and I ignored her because she was always barking at squirrels and birds and things thinking she was protecting our territory <laughs> what a silly dog but this time it wasn't a squirrel or a bird i actually don't even know for sure what it was but the tracks i found later looked like they might have come from a grizzly <gasps> When I realized how urgent her barking was, I ran outside, but she was already gone. That eerie silence is something I'll never forget. I searched for her all night and all the next day. I never found her. Just tracks and some blood and fur. I don't know if a bear grabbed her and took her, or if she went chasing after it or what. I just know I've never been so angry in my whole life. I was already dealing with the pain of losing my parents, and now Lola was gone too. After that, I pulled out all my family's old traps from the shed and set them up around the house. It was too little too late, but I needed to feel like I was doing something. It never occurred to me that a human might get hurt in one, and I'm really, really sorry that you did. at all for what happened to my leg. I was the one who trespassed in the dead of night. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry about Lola. That's a hard 
heartbreaking story. Sorry I made you cry. No, no, no. I'm glad you shared that with me. Okay, it's your turn. What for? To tell me something about you. Something real. Like, maybe, what brought you here? Or, if you're not ready to talk about that, then maybe you can tell me something else. Something more... light. Please? I hardly know anything about you. What do you want to know? Hmm... Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Hang on, that sounded like a job interview question. Let me try again. What kind of life do you dream about having? What are your hopes for the future? You mean, aside from hoping someone finds a way to cure this virus? Yeah, aside from that. It's sort of hard to imagine any particular future when everything seems so fragile all the time. Anything could change at any moment. But I guess, no matter my situation, I'd always want to help people. Like, I'd love to keep a giant garden, just so I could share all the fruits and veggies with my neighbors. Also, I would learn how to knit socks, so I can make sure everyone's feet stay nice and warm, because cold toes are the worst. And maybe... Maybe someday, I could have a family of my own. Wow. In my fantasy, I get abducted by aliens and they teach me how to drive their spaceship. <laughs> yeah, I may have to rethink that. For real though, that's a nice dream. Very altruistic. Anyway, I should probably let you get back to work now. <laughs> Don't do that! I'm super ticklish! No, oh, are you? I'm sorry, I didn't realize. <laughs> I have an idea. Let me treat you to a special dinner tonight. A special dinner? Ooh, and what would that be? I haven't thought that far ahead yet. Give me a minute. A most decadent helping of popped corn with truffle oil and adult beverages. <laughs> Dinner is popcorn and nondescript alcohol? That sounds fantastic. I'm back. I think this is the right one. Truffle oil yourself? Yeah, it's not too hard once you get the hang of it. The first batches I ever made were terrible, though. Lots of trial and error before I landed on the right mix of ingredients and timing.
Wow, that's so cool. I think it's incredible that you've learned to do all these things. That's just how it goes when you live on your own. If you'd like, I can teach you. You would want to teach me? Of course. You're a good company, and it might be fun to show you how these things work. What sort of movie would you like to watch? Hmm, how about something with action? And romance? Oh, and some comedy too! <laughs> That's a tall order. Let me see what I can find. some of the things he says. <laughs> I haven't laughed like this in so long. <laughs> oh my gosh, my stomach hurts from laughing. That. Thanks so much for watching with me. Parts of it were entertaining, definitely. Like that bizarre turtle in a top hat. <laughs> That's right. And how we saved them from that lizard beast was so insane. I guess I should get off your bed and let you get some sleep. Oh yeah, I guess so. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. See you in the morning? Definitely. You too. Get a good night's sleep. Good morning, sleepyhead. Wakey-wakey! Okay, you leave me no choice! Incoming... POTS ATTACK! Ah! 
<laughs> Oops, did I scare you? Well, you left me no choice. I tried calling you, throwing things at you, and wafting delicious smells in your direction. None of those worked, so this was my last resort for getting you to wake up. And it did the trick! You're awake now! What kind of monster just pounces like that on a poor defenseless sleeping person? Monster, you say? Wow, you sure do know how to give a girl a compliment. If you're jumping about like this, does that mean your leg is feeling better? It doesn't hurt as much, but it feels kind of weak. Like it might give out if I put too much weight on it. So why did you need me to wake up so urgently? you breakfast and I didn't want it to get cold. And I was worried. You're usually up way earlier than this. And maybe I was a little lonely and sort of missed you. Damn, what's up with me? I never sleep this long. Sometimes your body just needs a little extra rest. Okay, now... My mouth is watering. I never knew that was an actual thing that happened to mouths. Tee <laughs> Strawberry waffles from scratch will do that to you. You'll have to tell me once you taste them, but I think I may have outdone myself this time. The only thing I did make from scratch is the syrup. That's okay. I made the syrup from scratch. Wait, you did? There are tons of maple trees around here. I harvest their sap at the end of each winter. It's pretty simple. I drill small holes into the trees and insert what's called a spile, which is like a spout. The sap drains out through there and into a bucket. When I have enough to fill a pot, I essentially boil it down until it's mostly evaporated. Then it's syrup. And the best part is it keeps forever, so I can just store it in glass jars in my pantry. Like some kind of fairy magic. <laughs> the real magic is your cooking. This looks incredible. Although, do you mind taking it downstairs so we can eat there? I'd like to get dressed and, well, uh. Now, sorry, see you downstairs. I guess it's another day indoors. Look how glum that weather is. Hmm. Also, clouds like this mean we're not getting any solar, so we're relying on what's stored in the battery bank for now. We should limit how much electricity we use today. Okay, I'll be extra careful.
Well, I better make use of this time and get some work done on my computer. Doesn't that use up the electricity? The computer only draws around 250 watts. A couple of hours won't make much of a difference. Get out of here, Spam. Nobody likes you. Are you mending my clothes? Yes, those ones are already done, and these ones here are still in progress. I didn't even know you'd been working on this. Well, normally, I work on it before I go to sleep or when I first wake up. I find it sort of meditative. You know, you don't have to do all these things for me. I like keeping busy, and I like being helpful. Really, you've been so generous and kind taking me in like this. I just want to do everything I can to help you. You know, I don't think I'm in the right headspace for work today. Luckily, I don't have any looming deadlines, so maybe I'll take today off? We could just sit and enjoy the fire together. Maybe we could play a board game. Ooh, I love games. What did you have in mind? How about chess? Do you know how to play? sister sometimes. I'm uh, probably not very good at it. <laughs> That's okay. Neither am I. I'll grab the game. Meet me at the table, okay? Uh-oh. What's wrong? Fall asleep. <laughs> well, at least it's only asleep and not caught in a trap this time. White or black?
Are you missing a piece? Looks that way. I don't mind subbing in a salt shaker or something else to play with. No way. We should play with real pieces. Seriously, I can make you a proper chess piece. And I can make it look however you like. How? Remember the gauze with the cute potato pattern on it? I printed that out with my 3D printer. See? This is just a small one, but it's very useful and quite simple. I just plug in the USB cable to my computer, then use a program to tell the printer what to make. Wow, that's so cool! I'm missing the queen. Can it make that piece? <laughs> this baby can make anything your heart desires. Ask and you shall receive. I desire a cat. A cat queen? All right, that works. Can I watch? It's like something out of science fiction. Perfect! Look! There! The clouds are breaking! Nah! I'm not falling for that! You just want me to turn my back so you can move the pieces around! You trickster, you! <laughs> no, seriously! Look! The sun is shining over there! Can we go outside to look at it? Wow. Okay, yeah. Good idea. And I know a perfect viewing spot. Watch your step. It's still wet and might be slippery. Luckily, the ridges help give traction. What do you think? Pretty good spot to watch the sunset? It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart, for showing me all of this. It's already over? It happened so quick. Yeah. 
Yeah, it did. I don't know about you, but I'm freezing. Shall we go back in? I just... I... I never paid attention before. I never cared. Maybe the most beautiful things are beautiful because they're fleeting. You have to appreciate them while they're there. But hey, there'll be another sunset tomorrow. It's starting to rain again. Come on, let's go in. After you. Let me help you down. Thank you. You're like my own personal guardian. I feel like you'd never let anything bad happen to me. Not if you could help it anyway. Of course. I care about your well-being. It's so nice in here. I didn't realize how cold I was. How about I heat up something from the freezer? And while we're waiting, we can have tea. It's my turn to make it this time. That sounds nice. Thought you might like it. This tea is super yummy. Where did you get it from? Phew, I was hoping you'd say that. I actually made it myself. If you didn't like it, I probably would have told you it was a free sample that came in the mail or something. <laughs> you really made it? Like you grew it in your fish garden? Yep. Harvested the tea leaves myself, dried them, tested different blends. That's amazing. Who taught you all that? <clears throat> My mom did. She was a doctor. But she always had an affinity for herbal home remedies, too. You know, ginger for an upset stomach, honey for a sore throat, antibiotics for an infection. When I was a kid, I didn't know there was any difference. All I knew was that whenever I was sick or hurt, my mom would whip out some drink or salve that made everything better. It was like witchcraft. She was really the one who taught me all about plants, how to take care of them, how they can be used. Your mother sounds incredible. If she was a doctor, then she probably saved many lives. Yes, she and my father both helped save many people. They both died helping people. Until the bitter end, they tried to save as many lives as possible. They left behind a wonderful person, and you should be proud of that fact. I'm sorry that you lost them. So, is it your turn again? I've told you about my parents and my dog, but you haven't told me anything about your family. Honestly, Mallory, why 
are you so secretive? Why can't you tell me what you were doing out in the rain that night? I just... I want to know what brought you to me. I'm scared to talk about it. Just thinking about it hurts so much. And I'm afraid that if I say it out loud, I won't be able to take the pain. I understand. But if you share it with someone who cares about you, then they'll carry some of that pain too. You won't have to shoulder it alone. That someone is me, by the way. In case it wasn't obvious. I do want you to know me. To know about them. My family. Life was hard, but I loved them so, so much. It was just me, my mom, and my little sister. That was my bubble. We lived in a two-bedroom apartment. We learned to do a lot with the little, cooking nice meals out of subpar food, dressing up in old worn-out clothes, reenacting our favorite books when we couldn't read because the power was out again and there was no light. Our mom was a factory worker, so she had to go out every day to earn money for us so that we could at least survive. When she started showing symptoms, they sent her home. She tried to protect us. She stayed in her room, but we still went in, always trying to get her to eat or drink, giving her aspirin to keep down that awful fever. She kept telling us to stop coming in. We called for an ambulance already, but we were still on the waiting list. And what were we supposed to do? Leave her to die alone in her room? Well, she did die. My sister was with her when it happened. But I was out in the kitchen making us all something to eat. I can't even remember what it was. By the time it was our turn for the ambulance to come, it was only to take away a body. My sister and I, we didn't know what to do. How were we going to be able to buy food or pay for electricity? We were at the mercy of companies already struggling to produce anything. Factories in the middle of shutdowns due to waves of sickness. And it just seemed hopeless. But you know, we had learned about people living outside the cities. Smaller communities living off the land instead of trying to survive the old way. We thought, if that was real, Maybe we should just leave the city behind. Somehow figure out a way to be like those people. Like you. About a week after our mom died, my sister gave me some laundry she just finished washing. She asked me to hang it out on the balcony to dry, and while I did that, she locked me outside. I thought it was a prank at first, but she wouldn't let me in, and I got upset. I was banging on the door, yelling at her through the glass to open up. She told me she couldn't because she was sick. She'd started developing symptoms the night before, and she struggled with it all night and all morning. And finally, I begged her to open the door. She refused. She said there was no safe way for us to stay together. Our mother's attempts to protect us hadn't worked. So my sister decided to take drastic action while she could. She locked you out to save you. We both cried, looking at each other from opposite sides of the glass, while she begged me to go. So, I did. I climbed down the fire escape and just started walking. I wandered along the river and out through the suburbs into the woods. I didn't have anywhere to go, so I just kept on going. Eventually, I was heading up the mountain, totally lost, and that's when I found this place. I still 
think that maybe, somehow my sister's okay. Maybe she called for help and they came in time, and found room for her in a hospital ward, and she's fighting right now to pull through. I wonder if this was fate all along. I found you, and you taught me all these things. And we're all going to be just fine. I think you're right. I think it was fate. Because as much as you needed someone like me, I needed someone like you even more. I should check that. It's gotten pretty late. I guess we should go to sleep. Are you okay? Oh, totally. I just feel a little on edge during storms, that's all. No big deal. It's really, really fine. Okay. Well, there's the crank flashlight on the desk over by the door. If you feel like you need some backup light. And you know I'm just upstairs. Good night, Mallory. Thunder. I just get so scared. I can't help it. It's okay. It's only noise. It'll be over soon. tonight. Okay. It's okay. I want to stay with you. Of course, of course you can stay. Get comfortable, okay? Thank you. For everything. You make me feel so safe.
Good morning. Ah, you scared me. Sorry, sorry. I guess these slippers add plus one to my sneak ability. Are you feeling okay? I'm fine. I just got dizzy from standing up so quickly. You must have woken up really early to get this much work done. Did you get enough sleep? What's that? Oh, yes I did. Last night was the best sleep I've ever had. Good. I... I agree. Mallory? Mallory! Mallory, are you okay? Hey there. Um, why are we on the floor? You must have fainted. I knew something wasn't right. Why didn't you tell me? I, I'm fine. It was just a sudden dizzy spell. I haven't eaten breakfast, that's probably it. Doing ah! put me down. Honestly, I'm fine. I probably just overworked myself. Not buying it. You definitely have a fever. Is it your leg? Let me look at it. Maybe you've developed an infection. When did you start feeling sick? This morning? We can get your temperature under control with some aspirin, no worries. And then we'll go from there. Relax and let me take care of you for a minute, okay? I 
I should be keeping a closer eye on this. Drink your water, okay? And you should have something to eat. What would you like? I'm not really hungry. I just feel a bit tired. I'm sure I'll feel good as new if I just have a little nap. Carrots, onions, celery, potatoes... Potatoes? Oh no, of course I don't have potatoes! Mallory would hate to see that. Don't get up, at least not so fast. Let me help you. That's not what your body wanted. I'm glad you got some rest anyway. It was clearly much needed. Hi. How do you feel? My muscles are a bit achy. I don't feel cold anymore. I think all the blankets you piled on top of me helped. Wait, are you cooking? I am. It's ready to eat now. Go have a seat and I'll bring you a bowl. It looks really good. Thank you for making it. My pleasure. I bet you thought I had no cooking skills. Well, it's finally my time to shine. <laughs> I look forward to seeing what you're capable of cooking, senpai.
I use lots of spices. They make all the difference when flavoring a dish. Bon appetit. Too spicy? No, I, I can't. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Those autumn allergies are so annoying, am I right? Be sorry. What if? Shh. <coughs> you don't have to worry. Everything will be okay. All you need to do is rest and let me take care of you. This will pass. I think I maybe just want to lie down. Okay. I'll help you upstairs to the bed. He'll be extra comfy there. That means you're tucked in safe and sound. I'm going to get you some water and things, and then I'll be back, okay? I'm back. And I brought you your soup, in case you have an appetite. Also, some tea that should help with that cough. Thank you, but you're doing too much for me. Please, it doesn't feel like enough. Isn't there anything else I can get for you? Well, now that you mention it, I could use some tissue. 
issues. Ah, right. I've got some in this drawer here. Ta-da! <coughs> Why are you so determined to take care of me? You would do the same for me, wouldn't you? It's a no-brainer. I care about you and want you to feel better. It's as simple as that. Hey, I found the aspirin bottle, by the way. Of. Was it for your leg? To stop it hurting? Or did you. Did you know you were developing a fever? You know what? It doesn't matter. I placed an order for more. It should be here tomorrow or the next day, I think. I want you to know that I'm grateful to have you here. And I care about you very much. I don't want to be sick. I know. I don't want you to get sick. I'm not worried about that. You can't be near me. You need to stay away. I'm... I'm staying right here, by your side, no matter what. What a pretty flower. Where did it come from? From my fish garden, or whatever you called it. <laughs> it must have opened up today. I don't remember seeing it when I fed the fish yesterday. It's beautiful. What type of flower is it? A hibiscus. They only bloom for a short while, so we're lucky we got to see it. The petals make a wonderful tea. I'll make you some with the other blossoms, if you like. What is it? Hmm? Oh, nothing. The rain sounds nice. I think it's making me sleepy. That's perfectly alright. You have sweet dreams now. Good night. There's no way I'm getting back to sleep now.
public notice. The worldwide distribution of R. Pandavax is underway. Please read on for information on how and where to seek treatment. Patients who receive R. Pandavax have a 96% chance of recovering, up from the 45% seen with traditional medical intervention. Right, I wish. R. Pandavax rollouts are now taking place with med tents being set up outside major hospital locations in the countries and cities listed below. Symptomatic individuals should visit their nearest med tent as soon as possible for assessment and hospital admission. Is this actually real? Our Pandavax treatment will be administered free of charge with identification requirements relaxed by emergency order. Our Pandavax may also have a preventative effect, and individuals who have not been infected may opt to receive an immunizing dose. Mallory! Mallory, it's real! Mallory, we have to go now! Mallory? We both know I have it. My only hope is that it's not too late. That I haven't passed it to you. Because... I want you to carry on with your life. Don't worry about me. I'm going back home to find out what happened to my sister. Whatever the answer is, I'm comforted to know we'll see each other again soon. You know, I would have stayed with you forever. But I'm thankful we had the time that we did. Love, Mallory. Mallory! Mallory!
Oh no. No. Mallory. I'm sorry, Mallory. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs>